guys. Welcome to the Chelsea Skidmore Show. I'm here today with my guest, director Nick Goosen. 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 Goose. Nicholas Goosen. Nicholas Goosen. My full Is that names. Greek? <laughs> no, I, no. Ni- I think Nicholas is a common Greek name, but no, yeah. I'm not Greek at all. Italian? Uh, no, commonly mistaken for that. No, I think my family is uh, they're Russian Irish, mm. but I think the name Goosen is kind of Scandinavian. Hmm. I need to do that 23andMe thing. I did it. You did it. I found out I'm 46% Ashkenazi. I thought I was, you know, oh, I half think, Jew. Did I see? I might have seen a tweet about that. Yeah, I think I had something like that. Uh, I thought what I was, was the percentage? 46%. More than I thought. On what side? Oh, I also spent my uh, dad's. I also spent my entire life thinking I was Russian and telling everyone I was Russian. You look Russian. I thought I was until yeah. I read, until I was like, oh, I'm not. So I have to send a couple emails. And- so, but 46% <laughs> Ashkenazi, what's mm-hmm. the 54%? Um, it's a huge mix, like uh, Northern European. So like French. Right. That, that's Swedish. the other one that you could be. Yeah, French. mostly it's mostly French and Jewish. Mm. Yeah. I'm surprised everyone hasn't done 23 and Me by now. Yeah, but it's kind of, they send you a needle or something, and that how does it no. work? Or, yeah, Wait, how does the thing? I don't work? think as many people oh, would a, be oh, doing a, it. Yeah, it's a swab. Yeah, it's not a blood sample. <laughs> they right? send you an empty heroin syringe yeah. and just uh, yeah, it's a it's a vial you spit into. You have uh, to fill it with like a ton of spit. Right. Yeah, and uh, you send it back, and then they send you your. And it's so funny too because you get these emails that are um, like an email will pop up like oh uh, like uh, some new DNA has been found with like a relative like it links you to relatives you didn't know you had oh when other people start doing their tests like it's yeah. all entered into the database and they connect you like Facebook yeah or something like this is like a third common genetic threads exactly like Whoa. a third cousin or something and I genetic uh, social media yes. And I, uh, I looked two of them up on Facebook and I sent them a message like, Hey, I just did 23 and me and I saw you're my third cousin and neither of them responded. Really? <laughs> How long has it been since you sent them the message? I mean, this is like a year ago oh. or two. Maybe they checked out the But gram, I just thought that was so funny. Like, yeah. Mm. No relation for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, no, this couldn't be right. I feel like this is like probably a weird comment. D- do girls say to you, you look like my ex-boyfriend? Do you look like a mix of every girl's ex boyfriend? Which uh, which which ex boyfriend? You look like one of my ex boyfriends. I know one of your ex. You do? Y- yeah. Which? <laughs> that's why I just. I'm asked curious. I know one. He, he's what like, does the letter he, of his name start with? B. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't look oh, like that him. Not a boyfriend. No, he was. Unfortunately, okay. isn't that so weird? Yeah, and I, that's what. And not I, my type. That's why I was like, you couldn't possibly mean that guy because <laughs> no, I don't think no, I look anything uh, like a him. guy from New York. You look pretty similar. I don't, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Whatever. But now I'm curious. His name is Miles. You look kind of similar to him. Oh, I'm curious. Whatever. I was just wondering. Is he a comedian? No, he's oh. not funny at all. Oh, okay. Well, then how the hell would I know what he looks like? I know. How, why would anybody well, you ever wouldn't. ask me that? I think my question was is the he girls, famous? No, but he. No. Okay. But he, you know, whatever. Anyways. It sounds Weird like way to start off. off. <laughs> and you're married now, right? I'm getting married in two weeks. In two weeks? Yeah. Congratulations. Thank I you. didn't know it was like that soon. I, I know. I, always, uh, I already thought you guys were. You guys are a cute couple. Thank you. Yeah, we're getting married at the Madonna Inn. You know it? Of course I do. Yeah. I grew up in Southern California. Yeah, so where did you, um, where, you grew up in Los Angeles or... Yeah, I grew up in the Valley, 818. Brody, 818. <laughs> yeah, uh, in, uh, born in Tarzana. Ooh. Uh-huh. Where I believe he went He went to Reseda High. We're talking yeah, about I Brody think he did, Stevens now. Yeah, I think Great did, Brody Stevens. Yeah, I think he did go to Reseda. Uh, yeah, so I, of course I know the Madonna Inn. And so wait, I just, you're getting, that's pretty Isn't dope. it? That's well, pretty rad. we love photos. Where's my invite? I, sorry. Yeah, no, no. Uh, is it a? Are you doing a, like a big blowout there? It's like uh, 112 people. Oh, dude, but, you guys are gonna have a blast. But you know what's so weird is that like people like don't send back their RSVPs and then they're like, "I'm coming." It's like it's too fucking. Li- but I'm, you know, oh, I don't get why people don't realize. Oh, they lag there's, on the RSVPs and you're literally like, "Okay, well, well that person's there's like out. an etiquette they're not doing." Yeah, it's weird. You get those things like save the – did you send out the whole like save the date things? And yeah, like and then the RSVB like the, cards. Like do you send those you back when all, you receive them? Uh, or Rarely. What is that? 
unless you make it really easy with like some sort of email address on there or something. But I don't but get don't make why... me mail something back. <laughs> Is it just like the age, the generation mm. that we live in? Um, no, because I, I feel like I've been getting those for twenty years, and I've. <laughs> and do you show up to done. the wedding? Uh, yeah, unless it's like a destination wedding. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But only a couple of my friends have done that to me. Um, and then were they like, "Oh, I didn't know you would be here"? No, because I never showed up. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, I never showed up. Mm-hmm. No, I, I'm pretty selfish in that regard. Yeah. <laughs> Not about weddings? Uh, well, just I'm not about like, you know, my friend had a wedding in Detroit. Why? Like, uh, <laughs> Getting married by a trash can on fire? His wife's, <laughs> yeah. Eight his, mile reference? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, just like it's Gotham City over there, right? Uh, it's uh, uh, his wife's family was from there. So uh-huh. It's a good reason, good reason. But, uh, and I was one Yeah, of you're like, I don't need to make that one. Yeah, they were pretty upset about it, but they got divorced anyway. So, mm. you know, turns well, out, turns out, I kind of made the right call. Yeah. <laughs> Are you? Uh, but how, congratulations again thank on you. your wedding and for not inviting me. Sorry, that's, that's all good. Yeah. I'm Wait, excited. is Simon invited? No. Okay. Well, no. I don't feel that bad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, is Swartzen invited? I don't. I'm not. I don't know him. Oh, you don't. Know I wish him. I did. Oh. He's so funny. Is Delia going? No, Thea. I'm not like close with him. Oh, you don't know. I mean, anybody. I see him at the store all the time. I thought Brody's you were... going. Brody's going. Yeah, okay, and he's well, doing time. He... Oh, you have people like performing. Well, him. He's a special case. That's he's incredible. gonna do like. He's 20 doing minutes. crowd work at your wedding with like your family and stuff. Well, oh, I hope somebody. Do you have brothers or anything? I have a brother, but he's like. I don't. Is he's there very a chance? Introverted. Is there a chance that? Oh, so no chance he might pop off. And get drunk and say something to Brody or heckle no, him. No, 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 no. It would be great if somebody in your family heckled Brody <laughs> and then he just went off on him. <laughs> I feel like he's like such a force that like I don't know who would challenge him. Right. I mean, I mean yeah, not many people should, could, or would. But I don't you know, wedding, I don't know. Maybe all bets are off there because people are probably going to be pretty hammered at your wedding. Right? Yeah. I would, we're also – we got it sponsored by uh, – a couple of weed companies. Really? So we're going to have some free joints. I'm sober, but Dude, I just thought that was fun. You're going to have free joints at your wedding? Yeah. Um, I have to follow up. Kind of really fast. Like, you know what I mean? But no, that's <laughs> that's actually super. I thought that was cool. Madonna in yes. weed sponsorship mm-hmm. and Brody Stevens doing like a set. Mm-hmm. I, and like a photography wedding, studio. Like pretty much already a success. <laughs> photography studio? What, what do you mean? Well, a friend you mean of you're mine. A photographer. Yeah, but we're setting up like um like a cool backdrop, and we're gonna make it like a portrait studio. Oh, like he's the photographer for BuzzFeed, and he takes very cool photos, oh, so, like very high key. So and it's like, like you're gonna have like a Golden Globe set up, like at your <laughs> fucking thing. Like that's pretty. A Golden Globe set up. Vanity like, Fair set up. Vanity right? Fair. That's yeah. So funny. Well, you know, an award show type there. thing where they have like. Yeah, one of those. Those rooms. That's so funny. And they're going to have like the crazy like uh, uh, Photoshop filter that just softens everybody really yeah. crazy. Yeah. Imagine I like set up a tent blocking it off and wrote Vanity Fair photo room. You should velvet rope <laughs> it. Yeah. That would be it's great. Funny. So growing up in LA, what yeah. What was that like? Did you always want to be um, a director? Like what was your path with that? Uh, Yeah, well – Growing up in LA, I come from a like a, a, a third generation native. So my family, both on both sides, my mom and my dad's side, and so uh, and there wasn't really anybody in the movie business. But my family, my dad's side is in the boxing business, so it was a pretty oh. interesting and unique uh, uh, childhood in that regard. But uh, so we were kind of boxing and movies kind of go hand in hand uh, in that. I feel like did he train people on set? He did. He did. He started doing that like in the mid '80s, um, uh, and he had a, b- a bunch of interesting relationships from there. My dad, Joe Goose, and he's a Hall of Fame boxing trainer. Whoa! Yeah. Um, uh, right now, he's training this guy Amir Khan, who's pretty popular in London. Um, wow! He's still doing it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there was always actors around the gym and stuff mm-hmm. because I just feel like all. Entertainers want to be kind of tough guys. Yeah. And all tough guys kind of want to be entertainers. And now they want to be jujitsu guys. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You got the MMA thing too. You know, you still have a lot of celebrities. You know, I feel feel like boxing still attracts, like the big boxing matches still attract the most celebrities. Um, Did you grow up boxing? Do you box? I don't 
box. Like I don't go to the gym and like work on my boxing, but I literally grew up in a boxing gym for the first, wow. you know, my my childhood. And, you know, one of my some of my earliest memories are my dad being down on his knees wrapping my hands and, you know, working the mitts with me, which were just his bare hands. Yeah. Uh, and showing me how to throw punches. So I like to say I have a good 30 seconds in me of, of fighting. That's is... so cool. So you could – have you ever been in a fight before? Yeah, a couple. And I mean, did I, you win? I, I, I not nearly my fa- my cousins were all 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 way tougher than me. My my mm-hmm. family is way tougher. I was kind of in the younger generation because um, my dad comes from a family of uh, ten kids, eight boys, mm-hmm. and two girls. And oh, they, that is and Irish, right? It, that yes, because my grandmother, his mom was Irish, and my my dad's dad was a Russian Jew who his family came from Detroit and they were grew up in Boyle Heights and stuff. But uh, yes, there, that was the Irish and there were lots of kids. And uh, so they all had a bunch of sons. So I had like a zillion cousins, like a bunch of older brothers and they were all kind of scrappers. Mm-hmm. And uh, since they were always kind of like uh, kicking my ass when I was a kid, I was like, I just don't really feel like dealing with this. So I was kind of always <laughs> the one who was kind of more into the artistic stuff. Yeah. And I let them be the tough guys. But uh, Did your dad care about that? No, he never pushed me into mm-hmm. boxing. I mean, like I said, he was showing me how to throw punches since I've been a little kid mm-hmm. and I was always around it. But a bunch of my cousins were boxers and I think it was like – I don't know. I think uh, fathers and sons and boxing, it doesn't always work out too well. Yeah. Remember even Floyd Mayweather and, and uh, his dad, that they didn't have a great relationship for many years. And there's a long history of that kind of. Yeah. Uh, and fathers don't know when to say when. Does that make you an angry – do you think – was he like an angry person? <laughs> I mean it makes me wonder. Oh, you mean because he's a boxing trainer? Yeah. Or like aggressive, or does it? Yeah, yeah, he is. He's definitely an aggressive guy. He's a <laughs> tough dude. My my whole family's. T- I mean, my grandfather was a LAPD homicide detective. So I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, he was kind of a. He was like a well known LAPD detective in the, like the forties, like during that whole like LA Confidential wow. era. In fact, I'm pretty sure he worked on the Black Dahlia case. That's Pr- insane. Pretty sure. Like, yeah. so he was a detective in that era, which is you know is like a really hard nosed. Yeah. It's like a it's like a movie. So uh did he have a trench coat? <laughs> he, he he looked like Dick Tracy. I swear I love that I, movie I, when I was younger. I don't know why we had I mean it, on it was video. like a cartoon, I guess. It okay. was like super I don't know what like I'm talking about. No, you know, <laughs> I know. A yellow you, car, right? Yeah, I think that was from like the comic books, which were or the comic strip. Like, I thought it was made into a film. It was. No, okay. no, you were right. No, yeah. everything that you're saying is right. Okay. And, and the car, like, it was like super colorful. I think it was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Warren Beatty directed that movie, and, mm. and and he just tried to make it exactly like the comic. Yeah. I like that movie a lot too. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Corso, the kid from Hook, is like the little kid in that movie. I can't remember who was in Hook. He's like but the, I did see it. He's like he was Robin Williams' son in Hook, and he's also that little like miscreant kid in Dick Tracy who's always eating everything. That's a weird detail to remember about that movie. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> I remember Madonna and I remember Dustin Hoffman as like the guy who's like mumbling or something. Uh-huh. Anyway, Dick Tracy. Yeah. That's what my grandpa was like. He yeah. looked like him kind of, but without the yellow. So you grew up watching these people and you just kind of developed an artistic, like started seeing things differently? Do you well, know what I mean? I, yeah. I was in a sports family, but I will say that my dad was, you know, my family, they were kind of cinephiles. They liked mm-hmm. movies. You know, they were – they were, a lot of them were jocks too, but they were all – they they did like movies and, and, and you know, they were into cultural stuff. And so uh, my dad sat me down and had me watching movies pretty, pretty young. Well, you know, we were – he was wrapping my hands and having me hit the mitts, but he was also showing me like The Godfather when mm-hmm. I was a young kid. And I grew up kind of – I turned 40 next month, so I kind of came up in the 80s when – all those movies like the Spielberg stuff and uh, the VHS era, and we watched a lot of them because my cousin worked at a VHS store inside of a drugstore, Maxson's Drugstore. Huh. On, uh-huh. uh, I think it might still be on Ventura, but at this time it was like on Riverside Drive. Brody 818 <laughs> references Fulton Avenue, Riverside. Yes. yes. Uh, that's not even a good Brody. No, by that my, was by good. My that was good. I can do it way better. I just don't want to blow up the microphone. Um, 
to Mike back there listening. I think he's playing video games. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so my dad, he never, he never pushed the boxing on me. He actually showed me a lot of movies. And, you know, let, you know, when I was interested in comic books and stuff, he took me to comic book stores. And uh-huh. He – no, he definitely fostered the artistic stuff. And like I said, because I kind of worked – I kind of went with him wherever he went, Las Vegas. I was kind of like a little mini adult, which I definitely think helped me get into the business at a mm-hmm. pretty young age because I was just – I was more interested in hanging out with adults yeah. than I was kids uh-huh. because my dad kind of introduced me to this world and I was just kind of treated like another adult mm-hmm. because I kind of carried myself like one. And, uh, you know, when I was working at, at this place called the Reseda Country Club, which is where my family used to put on all kinds of boxing matches, that's how we kind of got a big reputation in Southern California. Mm-hmm. It's the place – do you ever see the movie Boogie Nights? Yeah. You know the opening scene where it's like they're at the nightclub and it's the big tracking shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I the, do. That was the that's the Reseda Country Club oh. on Sherman Way, uh-huh. and so we used to put on a bunch of fights there. And so I was a little kid running around selling programs at backstage, and you know, at that time in the eighties, it was like the big stars coming to the fights were David Hasselhoff, Michael J. Fox. Like that sounds really height. fun. It was really fun, Mr. That's T. That's a movie. It is, by the way. It is now. I, I'm on record kind of saying, like, my my big dream movie to make, um, I've made two movies so far, a comedy and a thriller, but my dream ultimately is to make a movie about my family, and it's kind of like a Boogie Nights, but with boxing. That sounds Hopefully awesome. Hopefully soon I'll get to do I didn't that. see uh, Bleed Through This. The Vinnie Pazienza movie? My friend made Miles it, though. Taller. Oh, uh, what's his name again? Uh, uh, Brewer? No, not no. Uh, the, oh my god! The, no, the I can't even think did, of his name. No, the guy who did. Uh, <laughs> he's Boiler the guy did room. Boiler room. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't ben even Younger. think of his name. Yeah, Ben Younger. That's so funny. Yeah, I met him when I was eighteen, and like yeah. uh, at Beatrice in this like really cool club in New York that doesn't exist anymore. I've heard of it. Never. And went. I like went back to this place and we made out, and then I recently saw him a couple years ago out here for like the first time since I was like eighteen. How was he, uh, how was that awkward? Or it was good? funny, like uh, because did you um, talk? Yeah, we hu- we hung out, and I like met him at this house, and then we like made out, and like, but I didn't really like it. Like, it wasn't good, like, chemistry. Mm. <laughs> and then he was like, come back the next night. Like, the jacuzzi is cold. I'll put on the heat. And by the time you come back tomorrow night, like, it'll be hot and we'll go in it. And I was like, okay. And then, like, I ended up getting together with the guy who I'm about to marry that, like, next morning. And I just never went over there. <laughs> oh, wait. So, wow. So, <laughs> yeah, so, kind so, of funny. So the, the guy that you're about to marry, you, yeah. you met him a long time ago? We've been and friends then... for three years before we started dating. Oh, wow. Yeah. We were just friends, and then we hooked up. And it was, like, right around that time. But anyways, yeah, Ben Younger. But I thought of it because it's, like, a current boxing film, and for some reason I thought it was, like, dated sort of, uh, well, like, a period it, piece. It, it, it a is a period piece. I think it tracks Vinny Pazienza's career. And Vinny but is Pazienza. that, like, the 70s? No, is it was the – I think 80s? Pazienza may have started in the late 70s, but I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure his heyday was in the 80s. And, like uh, – mm-hmm. but, well, I take that back. Because he did come back from that injury, mm-hmm. I think, in the early 90s. Yeah, I, so anyways. Yeah, 80s, but 90s. yours, the glamorous. It was very 80s. Like, you know, I don't think it's any secret now, but like, yeah, Michael J. Fox was doing uh-huh. coke in the bathroom. Is the that place. how he got that's, Parkinson's? That, that's the. I'm kidding. That's, really? No, that's the. I'm <laughs> pretty thinking, sure that's common knowledge now, isn't it? Oh like, my God. Coke gives Parkinson's? Pretty sure it contributes to it. Wow. If, you do, if you like do a lot. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he was like, do yeah. a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was like that kind of scene. Uh huh. Um, so, uh, I was able to kind of start working on sets at a young age. Mm-hmm. I was I got to visit sets because uh, through boxing and through my dad doing mm-hmm. some movies where he was like a technical advisor and stuff. They uh, he uh, my family got a, a be, had a relationship with Gene Hackman mm-hmm. as a, you know Oscar winning actor, and he got me on some sets and connected me to some places and. Uh, that kind of started me off. And when I saw Reservoir Dogs at like 12 or 13 or whatever, that's when I knew I was going to be a director. So Mm -hmm. 
Never, never wanted to be a boxer. It was just, <laughs> dude, it's a tough life, man. Yeah. I think a creative career is so much cooler anyways. No yeah, offense. and I grew Nothing up Nothing against your dad. It sounds very cool and he's very accomplished. Yeah. But, you know. No, yeah. Well, that's the other thing. It's like, I don't want, like, there's no way I'm going to be ever be able to eclipse his mm-hmm. accomplishments in boxing. Yeah. And, you know, sons always want to at least, you know, rise to the level totally. of their fathers, if not surpass them. Yeah, so but they I, have a resentment against y- them. Y- yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's built in. It's built in. No, but, you know, my dad already t- likes to tell me what to do a lot. And I just, uh, you know, if I was in the boxing business, that would be never ending. What did he tell you that you were like supposed to be when you're young? He never told me what I was supposed to be. I'm very fortunate that way. My parents were very supportive. You know, it's like, I guess I grew up in LA. So I respect people who, where are you from again? New York. Yeah. You're from New York. Okay. Well, it's a little different. You're from like a big city too. So you can grow up in New York going, yeah, like dreams are very, you can accomplish, you know, Mm -hmm. things uh, that a lot of people can only dream about. Yeah, I grew up in a small town where I was like, man, I'd love to be in the pictures. (laughs) Right. And your family is in New York. So it's not like you're uh, disconnected from people. You have a support system Mm -hmm. in the big city. A lot of people who just move out there on their own, out here on their own Mm -hmm. or New York on their own and have to make it without the support of family and stuff like that. I really respect yeah. that. I don't know what that's like. Yeah. Because it, it looks like Brad Pitt's career now. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, sh- I don't know. man. Yeah. But he, he, he did this that. the first person I could think of. No. Well, I mean, he is a great example. He came from yeah. like Missouri or something. Like, yeah. Something. Very, somewhere in the, very, between New York and LA. Yeah. <laughs> like his family did not have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and he's been with the same manager his whole career. Really? Mm-hmm. I love him. woman named like Cynthia, that. Cynthia Pet. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Wow, why do you know that? Because <laughs> she's she, uh, you know what, yeah, I, I'm friends with it. Well, a she owns the company that I'm managed by. Oh, Brill Scene Entertainment, or she's you do? a partner. Yeah, my friend is best friends with the girl whose dad started that. Bernie, so the guy Bernie, who did, Bernie yes. Brillstein. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I guess he has I, a daughter named Katie or something. I I know I know. Yeah, I I don't. I'm not sure if this I've ever met her. This is a new her. friend I've noticed my friend having, so that's why I kind of have a problem with it. Oh, uh, well, her dad, her dad was a legend. Yeah. Bernie Brillstein. He yeah. was amazing. I was lucky to have one sit down with him. Wow. Yeah. Well, great management company. It is. I've been with them for my whole career and that's mm-hmm. where, you know, my friend Adam is and Brad and uh, Brad uh, Pitt is there too. Oh, really? Yeah. But I thought they were like comedy. They are, but I mean like the... I mean, they are known for comedy because they had so many accomplishments in uh-huh. comedy, but they represent everybody. I think I'm not like a lot of like mm. dramatic actors too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Brad Pitt being one of yeah. them, and like they, you know, kind of that whole Plan B production company, which makes mm-hmm. like Oscar-winning movies like Moonlight and stuff. You forget Brad Pitt like produced that. Uh, yeah, I did. You did forget that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, see. <laughs> Brad Pitt is the best, man. We're on camera right now. It's great. I that, forget. I don't even. I don't even light. I don't know. Well, it's great Might that we have this interrogation it. lighting. In we'll here. see. This is, I speaking know. of like LAPD, Black Dahlia. Anything uh, you want to tell you me? Where were you on the yeah. night of? I mean, where were you in the 1940s? <laughs> yeah. So how did you start working with Adam Sandler? Adam Sandler. Uh, well, I was. Right out of high school, and my uncle, not on my dad's side, actually, on my mom's side, the one the one family member who I kind of had who was working in the business as a location manager, you know, the guy who yeah. goes and gets all the permits and that kind of stuff, um, he was working on The Wedding Singer. And oh. I had just graduated high school, and um, I was taking some film school classes here locally, and uh, I got... I I was an intern on The Wedding Singer on the very first day of shooting on set. I think I was wearing a Michael Jordan jersey for his comeback. So it was the black Chicago Bulls jersey. And I was holding some film mags, which don't even exist anymore. (laughs) And uh, on Adam's sets anyway. And uh, uh, he just rolled right up to me in that goofy wig and was like, introduced himself and asked if I wanted to play basketball at lunch. That's funny. That was kind of the start of our friendship. Um, Yeah. But uh, over the course of that movie, we I got to know Adam and kind of the whole crew. And that must have been a fun movie. That was, was a good one. It was so much fun. It, it was it was kind of before he became super super huge. Uh huh. Um, but Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore had been out at that point. I think he had done Bulletproof, but uh, he hadn't become like this crazy huge box office you know yeah star and uh the wedding singer was kind of the start of that wow and i thought billy madison was like the first well i guess he was still pretty young then 
Well, he was young. I mean, young and I yeah. mean, he, I think he was thirty when he made the wedding. Singer. What? Yeah. So. Oh my god. But uh, uh, but I'm just saying, Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore, they were they're awesome movies. It's yeah. just I don't think that they made they didn't make like a hundred million dollars at the totally. box office or anything like that. Um, and the Wedding Singer didn't either, but it came close and, yeah. and it was up against Titanic. But anyway, so be, it was 1997. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's when it came out. But I, I just we know shot the, the movie when in Titanic 90s. came out. Yeah, well, yeah. I was a young girl. That's when it came out, correct. And <laughs> I saw Titanic on opening night, Christmas. Yeah. I think it went uh-huh. in 96, I guess, because it was Christmas. I worked on Little Nicky when you I was did? 12, and I got my SAG card. It was the first thing I ever worked on. I worked on it for three days playing a schoolgirl. W- in There's New like York? A, oh, yeah. You, oh, yeah. See, I wasn't at the New York portion of that shoot. And it was uh, – oh, you, you worked on that too? Yeah. That's so funny. Mm-hmm. I worked on the L.A. portion of the shoot, which is a lot more expensive. I didn't even know they also shot it in L.A. Well, you can be they, forgiven oh, the for that. You were, stuff. Oh, the apartment stuff. I mean, yeah. it was a lot, too. Also, all the stuff that's Central Park is, I guess every, is not Central Park. I can't even remember. I just remember chasing whole, him down the street. Oh, you were like a part one of, of that when he had gr- the bounty out for right. him. Right. Oh, can you be seen in the in the in the shots? Um. Yeah, I could see myself because I know, but it's all like quick running around scenes, and it was so funny because I was like twelve years old, and like you know, little girls like love Adam Sandler at that age. Yeah. And so we'd have to like run after him, and every single time they yelled cut, we just ran into him and hugged him. Ah, uh, that's <laughs> it was funny. cute. That is cute. Yeah. So yeah. that must have been so fun, like being seventeen, just. All like yeah, all, just swooped right in. Like yeah, I it, I got I kind of was like the first person kind of outside of that NYU uh, college mm-hmm. uh, team of his to kind of get f- folded into the group. Oh, is that the? <sighs> well, he went to NYU, and a lot of his okay. frequent coll- collaborators. Yeah, um, that went w- there as well. I can't think of the guy. Well, whatever. So I have someone in mind who I'm thinking of. Who is in like everything? Probably covert. And he just worked on Sandy. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You oh yeah, you were in Sandy too, weren't you? Or did I, you work on it? I, I did work on it. Oh yeah, um, you were at the, like the table but, of spades yeah. or something? No, with Polly. Oh with Polly Short. Yeah, yeah. yeah like it was yeah, it was just you. like a featured thing. And yeah. then I got to but the I had a couple lines that got cut, unfortunately. Oh. Uh, but it was fun. It was so much fun. Yeah, it was so cool, like just because you know, Adam was I mean like Stephen Brill I think directed yep. it. Yep. Who also directed Little Nicky, but yep. Adam I don't want to be like saying a rude way, override you know, he <laughs> <laughs> creatively inputs, I want to say it in the best way that Brill, you just got put on blast, son. <laughs> Don't but, worry, he'll never see this. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yes. But it was so cool, like to be directed by Adam and then having Nick Swartz and shouting out right. things for us. You know, it was like it's a very it's a very collaborative effort. Um, Adam is the leader. You know, on on those movie shoots. You know, occasionally he'll he'll go work outside of that uh, mm-hmm. outside of his own company and work with guys like Paul Thomas Anderson or you know James L. Brooks or. Mm-hmm. Uh, something like that, or Noah Baumbach, yeah. Um, and you know he'll let he'll let go for for those guys. You know when he's doing his own movies, it's a, it's it's a kind of a team thing, and, you know, and he's the leader of the team. Yeah, and it's so cool. Like I think how he just uses you know it's just like making movies with your friends. He and like everyone is along for like the. I mean, a bu- uh, you know. Yeah, he's the king. For, I mean, Adam. Adam has really figured out an amazing way to, uh, you know, do it the way he wants to do it. Mm-hmm. It's uh, you know, it's been a, it's been quite, it's been a, so interesting to see how since I met him. Well, from the I Wedding was just going to say from to seventeen get, till now, that's a long relationship. And he's always been, yeah, yeah. We've and he he's one of my best friends. He's a mentor, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, he taught me a lot about you know how to be a, a, a filmmaker and just wow. and about work ethic in general and, and you know, being a good person because he's also just a really generous, uh-huh. kind person. I mean, I'm, everybody says that about him. Yeah. But, uh, Can you think of any thing that comes to mind, like advice that you've learned from him that you can share or anyone, anything that maybe you've just learned along the way in general? Well, I mean, he, he kind of, it just, 
I mean, growing up in the family I grew up in, you know, it was a bit godfathery, a bit, you said Italian, it's a bit mafia-ish, right? Yeah. And my family is really close. A lot of people aren't close with their family. I grew up being very close with all my cousins, and there was a sense, you know, one thing that was stressed above all other things growing up was loyalty, mm-hmm. and especially to your family. And... Adam has a very similar sensibility. He was raised in a very similar way. You know, he he he. His dad was a contractor. You know, uh, old school guy, and uh, he grew up in New Hampshire. And um, so he kind of has that kind of uh, sensibility when it comes to what he does, his career in Hollywood. And you know, it's like a family. Mm-hmm. It, it really is. And a lot of people say that, but. Uh, a lot of people just say that when it's like, oh, they're the three months on set. Yeah, you're like a family. Well, everybody, you know, when you're working together that intensely for a while, yeah, it does begin to feel like that. But with Adam, it's you're talking about an extended period of years, decades now. Yeah, where that's incredible. It's like this, I, very few people, I don't, you know, w- I, will accomplish mm-hmm. what he's aco- like the kind of run he's. It's had. insane. It's, it really is, and it's like never. I mean, it's just like it's almost like. I can't think of anything else to say, but recession proof. Not, but I don't. It's not recession proof, but it's like never ending. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He, uh, yeah. I mean, foolproof. I mean, in a way, I mean, he's there's there's like some ups and downs mm-hmm. here and there, but I yeah. mean, for the most part, I mean, pretty. I mean, we're doing another one. I mean, so <laughs> consistent, and people. Uh, he makes so many people happy, and people love him so much, and and I think everybody find something that they like about every one of his movies and Mm -hmm. a lot of people find something to like in every one of them so uh and he just he's always kind of ahead of the curve you know even with his netflix thing Mm -hmm. he was like one of the first people to get signed to one of those deals yeah where he had you know eight picture deal Uh uh-huh and everybody was kind of like what why and now (laughs) and now three years later it's like uh, everybody wants a netflix deal it's all anybody wants but he was kind of the first that's guy true. in a way yeah. so um he's just a really smart cool guy how did you <laughs> funny obviously too he's a legend yeah how did you end up uh directing grandma's boy uh that was something where it's like uh you know since the time i met him on the wedding singer it was like we i did basically eight years of of uh you put in the work yeah i did eight years working with with him on all those movies and in various capacities, I've kind of done every job on a movie set, you know, mm-hmm. and and eventually, um, like was, more crew than creative in the beginning, would you say? Well, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Um, even though I was kind of around all the creative conversations as well, because I was, you know, I, I was the a PA who was also hanging out in Adam's trailer, you know, I was, yeah, I was the political hire mm-hmm. sometimes that the ads weren't didn't love uh mm-hmm. um but yeah i the, the ad tried to fire me off little nicky and he had to be told uh, no it's not, not. how he old had, were you then oh 19 uh, 20 that's so funny yeah something like 21 maybe um and uh uh we so i did 8 years and i was kind of directing everything that wasn't a movie editing i eventually started i created his website and oh. was doing all like the dvd shorts and then i started doing some music like i did a music video for him and and then we he had a company and he had made Deuce Bigelow, which was a movie for his friend yeah, Rob Schneider. That was funny. And so he started to produce movies that he wasn't in. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of just developed it internally. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's how it came about. So I was kind of always in on it since the inception. Mm. And so that was like the first completely homegrown project for, mm-hmm. for Happy Madison. So, yeah, working. Eight years for him, and uh, then yeah, all of a sudden, college and a master's. It was like, you know, yeah, but and then all, all of a sudden, now you're directing a movie for. I mean, like for Fox. Yeah, I can't even Fox, imagine yeah. how good that must have felt. It felt great. At the same time, it was like, okay, well, this is what it's. It was just kind of all it's business. On. Yeah, and, it, <laughs> and you know, it was very focused uh-huh. for me. You know, because I had a lot to prove. And yeah, did you feel like very pressured and nervous or? Uh, I never really felt that nervous Mm -hmm. and Swartzen can tell you this too. I just was so confident, um, which is what you often hear about people making their first movie. 
you know, per- perhaps oh, really? now, I, you know, the next movie I make, maybe perhaps I'll have more butterflies. I don't know. I feel pretty confident in my mm-hmm. in my abilities right well, now. Well, it's like because you have a vision sort of thing or just confident. Sort of. Also, it was a little bit of like, you know, I was 26 making my first movie and, you know, you it's that youthful kind of uh, I got uh, cockiness. <laughs> and But uh, at the same time, I was very prepared uh-huh. from having been there from the very beginning of the script writing process to being very involved with that. And I just thought it, we just thought it was so funny and we knew what was funny about it. And we just got, I also had a certain amount of familiarity with the crew. Mm-hmm. So these were people that I've been working with for eight years on the Adam Sandler yeah, movie so sets because supportive. we had a lot of, you know, the video village guy and, or to the craft service guy to a couple, although the, de- the department heads were mostly all new people that I kind of selected from mm-hmm. the DP to the AD to the costume designer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there were enough familiar faces around that it was like, you know, I, I felt supported. Yeah. And I felt like everybody was there. Everybody was kind of working for cheap, but we were we were in L.A. I didn't have to go outside of the city. And, um, you know, I had Nick and, and Covert there to kind of for, mm-hmm. you know, when we were like, okay, I think we got it. It's funny. and. I knew what? what I was doing with the camera at that point because I was always making stuff. And yeah. Once I f- had a full crew behind me, a Hollywood crew, I was like, oh, this is – I don't have to hold the camera myself and yeah. put up the lights myself and plug everything in and do it all. It felt like I was invincible. Wow. So – and we had a great cast. I mean, bottom yeah. line is we had, we had some just great people. We got lucky with the casting, the timing. Um, like even the movie made no money when it came out. I feel like but. every guy I know loves that movie. Yeah, people people are pretty passionate about it. Yeah, I mean, it took, it it's took, like a cult. Yeah, favorite. Yeah, it's like a cult movie. You could, I think, you can confidently say that a cult classic. You know, a lot of people like to call it that. Uh huh. Um, I, I, it was a really fun movie to make. Mm-hmm. Really fun movie to make. And then you made a thriller after that. I did. I made another movie a couple of years later um, called The Shortcut. Um, with some again really talented people in it. It was a, just a totally different kind of scenario. Um, where, uh, you know, I had to go to Canada to make it kind of, Mm -hmm. it was kind of squeezed into the wrong place. This was in the heyday of the tax rebates in Canada and people were just trying to squeeze as much money. It was like during, right in the middle of the recession and Mm -hmm. DVD. 2008? (laughs) That's when we started shooting, we started shooting it. Why am I like, why are you so good? Yeah, you're really good about Titanic. I don't know, it's just today. 2008 No, maybe I know more than I think I do. Uh, You're a smart cookie. Thank you. You know, you, you put Madonna in, you're getting sponsorships for your yeah, wedding. I'm on like, it. You're very, yeah, uh-huh. forward thinking. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? So, uh, oh, you oh were the thriller. Up in yeah, yeah, I was in Canada anyway. So, how, like, okay, so after doing a comedy and being around all these, um, you know, being in this comedy crew, for lack of a yeah. cooler word, uh, wh- yeah. how did you all of a sudden be involved with, uh, like, that kind of genre? Well, I guess I should say that I kind of always was, like, a, a bit, you know, I think. My family is really funny. My dad mm-hmm. is funny. My my cousins are funny. I did grow up in a family that had a really good sense of humor. They used to actually I could say that along with my dad showing me movies, my family making little goofy movies with the mm-hmm. with a home video camera kind of it did inspire me. Totally. So and I then I started making those with them and I was making it with my sister and stuff. So and I was a bit of a, a class clown in school. And so I, I got I, class clown. Yeah. I, <laughs> that right, you know. That that makes sense. I think a lot of people that we know so would get that. Yeah. I don't know if I ever officially won that, I think, but I was definitely. You would have. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people in this town are the class town, right? <laughs> but um, so I I fell in easy with the Sandler crew, and that's why it's easy for me to get along with comedians. I think you have to, right, to be able to, yeah. to, to work in comedy. You ha- have to have some sort of sense of timing, sense of humor. But at the same time. I didn't ever grow up just wanting to make comedy movies. Mm -hmm. I love comedies, but I love a lot of other kind of movies too. And scary movies would be a genre that I love. So uh, when I got the chance to do one, and initially it was a little bit more – it was supposed to be rated R and more blood and stuff like that, which – Okay. How annoying was that? Super annoying because – this is, you know, and, and things have changed a lot since when I made Grandma's Boy to when I made the shortcut to the state of the industry now for low-budget movies, low-budget comedies, low-budget mm-hmm. horror movies. 
the and it's been shifting so much since that time. Um, but who wants a PG thirteen horror movie? Mm. You know, at that time, I'm angry. <laughs> well, well, there are a lot of successful PG thirteen horror movies. Never mind. Sorry. There are. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's how I break it down. Horror movies. If you're going PG thirteen, you need supernatural. Oh, okay. You need ghosts, goblins, monsters. You know. That kind of stuff, supernatural elements that special effects usually that pretty pretty heavy, um, because then you can get away with without blood in a way because mm-hmm. or seeing things like go into people, which is like makes it rated R. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, really? So like is that, that that movie Prom Night at this time, that movie. Remember that they made a remake of that movie Prom Night. Sony did Sony Screen Gems, and it was like a slasher movie because Scream was huge uh-huh. and that showed a lot of gore. That was that was rated incredible. R. As a matter of fact, the guy who shot Scream shot my movie, the same What? DP, right? So, <laughs> you know, that's what I was trying to make something that was like a Scream uh-huh. uh, in terms of like the tone and the violence, right? It's one of my Did favorite. Did that feel good? <laughs> yeah. Well, he's also the same guy who shot Grandma's Boy because the, oh. the guy who shot Scream is also a guy who shot Dumb and Dumber. Really? There's something about Mary. Wow. Kingpin, you know. Uh, uh, What's his Freddy name? Got Fingered. His name is Mark Irwin. And uh, he's a DP. He's been around a long time, and he wow. shot. He shot. He shot all kinds of genres, and he also shot old school by oh, Todd Phillips, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. that was the main reason why I hired him for Grandma's Boys because, you know, uh, I love the way that movie looks yeah. and how it's like a cool looking movie. That's and so cool. Todd Phillips is you know yeah uh, uh, I know Todd. somebody who uh, yeah you know Todd he's around here. He a wouldn't lot. do the podcast. Shout out Todd like Phillips. Smart man. No. Uh, well, he's in New York. He's a busy man. Yeah, he's um, shooting the Joker. He's in New York right Joker now. Movie. Yeah, he's getting ready to do that. Um, uh, great guy. Uh, but that's why I hired that dude. And mm-hmm. when they – the independent financer, whereas on Grandma's Boy, we had a pretty cool one who kind of let us do what we wanted to. Uh, on my other movie, I had one kind of the opposite. And yeah. so a lot of things kind of got forced upon me. At the last second, and I was kind of I was pregnant with it. They changed stuff on you. Yeah, like the rating. Like they said, it had to be. It was supposed to be rated R when I signed on, and when uh-huh. I first read the script, and I was like, okay, I can make something kind of yeah. scary out of this. And then it became a PG thirteen thing, which then required a kind of, kind of different. Approach. Yeah, what did that and, change? Well, or like, what you, did you have to remove? Blood. Really? Yeah, you can't show really. You can't show much blood. You know what I thought was so Certainly interesting? Certainly if you're an independent movie and you mm-hmm. can't afford to keep going back to the ratings board because that I'm surprised money. that's such an odd uh, – do you know what I mean? Like that's such an odd thing that that's what makes it R. That and but like – and I, well, because just to finish my point about, about horror is that if it's rated – if it's going to be human evil – because I was saying if you're doing PG-13, it's got to be supernatural. If it's going to be uh, a human that you're supposed to be scared of, mm-hmm. like you have to be able to see them like – I mean that's what we're most scared of. Not really getting shot. It's more like getting hacked up or something. Yeah. Or tortured, you know. Yeah. And that requires an R rating. Well, I remember um, listening – And I didn't have ghosts in my movie. No ghosts. Good. <laughs> so, well, no, it screwed me because I – that's why – Anyway. In, in the Spielberg doc, uh, you know, when they're making Jaws, they had a lot of, you know, issues. Yeah, yep. it was. And what I thought was like a really cool thing uh, that I took away was um, when you're making scary movies, it's a lot scarier what you don't see. True. So that probably works True. in your advantage. Well, well, yeah. I mean, look, I'm not going to – it's like Psycho is – I mean, but you did see a little blood in Psycho. Remember, it's going through the yeah. drain and everything. It's just black and white and, you know, you don't actually see the knife going in, I don't think, but – Yes, it is. Look, it, there are parts of it that I'm 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 happy with. It's not as successful as far as like Grandma's Boy is as a comedy as my other movie is as a thriller. But there are still some. Mm-hmm. It's I think it's an easy watch. But uh, yeah, you're, uh, it's all about POV and mm-hmm. you know Mister X and. Uh, I need to see that movie Hereditary. Have you seen that? Oh my god, yeah. Was it great? It was, it was great. See, some people hate it. Some people really? love it. I I need to see it because, uh, like, I heard it's kind of similar, to, like this movie, The Witch, or or other movies of that ilk, where or Rosemary's Baby. Yes, maybe. Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, which you don't see a lot in mm-hmm. that movie, but it's terrifying. It was really cool. I feel like I haven't seen something like this in a in a you know in a long time. Yeah. And I thought it was like really well done, and it was very scary. Yeah, I uh, I got to see that. Yeah, it was great. 
Like um, this is a very cinematic uh, podcast so far. It is. Well, yeah. this is. I'm. I'm. Do you talk about movies a lot on your podcast? I've n- I actually um, confession. I've never heard your podcast. That's okay. I mean, it's it's a fairly new podcast. I mean, I've had What's probably just again? thirty episodes so far. The Chelsea oh. Skidmore Show. Oh, okay, cool. But I'm trying to have on a lot of different types of guests. Yeah. But I'm very interested. It in works movies, for Joe Rogan, and I want to be a director. Oh, you do? Well, I do. I mean, I, I, you know, writing, stand up, acting, oh. but I'm very interested in directing. Oh. So all of these, like, making every, out with directors. What? What? Ben Younger. Yeah. <laughs> um, everything Sorry. that you're Sorry. saying, like, I'm like, oh, I imagine how I would feel in that situation. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm like, have you d- have you made stuff before? I have. Well, I just did you. I made this cult mockumentary trailer that I pretended was a film. I don't know if you caught it. I like put it on social media last week, but um, it was the first thing that I directed by myself, and I had been wanting to direct something for a really long time. I was working with this um, girl who was a writing partner of mine, and we co-directed something. But to be honest, she just overrode me and handled the whole thing. And mm. it wasn't my... It wasn't what I would have done. Mm. So this is the first thing that I've directed by myself, you know, mm-hmm. and it felt so good. And I love the way that it came out. And I really want... But that's... We just made a mockumentary trailer. Oh, to pretend it was a movie about a cult. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's I mean, funny. It was like a small thing I did practice. in a day that was fun. That's that's what you have to do. But I do want to – I'm very like – I think the word is controlling and have like a vision of like how I want – I mean I'm getting like manic talking. Of, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So no, it's that. A, that's a very director-ish type trait is talking with your hands like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also from New York. Yeah, that's um, true. Or no, I guess Italian. Hey. Hey, yeah. Um, Yeah, but, like, I I want to. I also, like, tell me this. So I never went to – this is the only thing that, like – like, visually, like, I can see, like, shots that I want or, like, how I want things to go. Sure. But I know nothing about, like, lighting. I don't know technical terms. Like, do you really need to fucking know that when you direct a movie? Or does the DP just handle that? Well, it helps because Mm -hmm. you never want anybody to be able to just kind of BS you. Say bullshit. that again? You don't want anybody to be able to bullshit you. About, in what way? In in other words, if you don't know how long it might take to light something mm. or how long it should take to light mm-hmm. something, somebody might go, I need this much time. Or or they might go, well, you can't do this because, you know, look, unless you're working with a well-oiled machine and you guys have worked together a long time and you have a shorthand, I mean, when you sometimes – you get put in situations where, and sometimes under stress, people can just kind of revert back to covering their own ass in a way. And uh-huh. sometimes you have to, and to be a leader, you kind of have to be able to uh, know how somebody else's job works mm-hmm. so that you can help them solve problems mm-hmm. um, and figure out ways to, you know, f- find solutions to, to problems. Yeah. And, um, same same thing, but uh, that's that's what that's what I mean. Like uh, 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 a, a sound guy telling you why he can't put a mic on somebody or why it should be figure burned. it out. But, yeah, well, <laughs> you could do that, but when you're just starting, you can't be see, that. Asshole. Yeah, you can't. I'm already you, <laughs> see that's a, yeah, you're kind of already going to like uh, you know Spielberg type status where you could actually do that when you can't replace people like that. You know, because you have Get so much money. Get this guy off my set. Yeah. I become Christian Bale. Who said you can yeah. walk? La da da. La di da di da di da. That was such oh, a funny. Oh, did he get cut. angry in his accent? Well, well, he's British, so he had an accent. I know. Yeah, but no, yeah. how funny was that? It was really funny. Yeah, Mick G was insane. I anything, love how but. like the YouTube of that. It's just all black and all audio. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was it. Was I, I felt bad for that guy? Yeah, but. Sometimes, I mean, I don't on, think on, I'm that person, uh, but on the like, I don't think Mick G ever. I mean, there it, he might have had a good reason to be honest with you. I mean, is so, that who I mean, like, at? there's a certain protocol. I mean, who knows what the circumstances of that were? I mean, yeah, it seemed like it was a bit excessive, obviously, but mm-hmm. I don't know what I mean. You know how expensive those mm-hmm. I mean, it was a big movie, Terminator Genesis, or whatever oh, the fourth Terminator. I mean, this it's like. Who knows how much per day that thing's costing, and this guy's mm-hmm. trying to do some crazy scene where he's crawling, or you know, he's got to act like he's scared of a robot. Do you ever have like awkward situations where it's like you tell someone what to do, you're the director, 
And then like, you're like, they're trying to make this their own. Yeah. See, (laughs) and I don't want to, I I guess I answered your question kind of like, uh, I kind of set it up where it's like, it's always adversarial with the director and the crew and it's not in the best situations. It's not. Sometimes it can be because oftentimes, uh, you know, if you can't decide for yourself, oftentimes you have to work with people who you've never worked with before. And, you know, you try and hire department heads and then they bring in other people and, uh, sometimes that gets tricky, but to, to answer your other question of does, is it important to know like about lighting and camera work? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I think, oh, it, would do be, I have to I go think to... it would be stupid to say it was, no, you don't have to go to film school. What do I have to do? Just shadow someone? No. Uh, I think it, it really just comes with time and experience because okay. watching movies, mm-hmm. reading about movies, listening to people talk about how they made movies, then going out and making your own little movies yeah. with nobody just by yourself kind of, um, or very few people where you can really take your time and kind of figure out what you're doing. Uh, and then just being around the actual process where people who are really good at it yeah. helps a lot to see how it's done. Yeah. And if you don't have access to that, this is where like a lot of the interview stuff or YouTube behind the scenes footage can help. Uh-huh. And you've been on enough sets now where you can visualize and you yeah. can kind of, when you see behind the scenes footage, you can mm-hmm. understand, you can kind of, see what's happening better than maybe somebody who's never been on a set before mm-hmm. a big movie set. Mm-hmm. So but you learned a lot. Of, I mean, obviously I didn't everyone... go to film school. I didn't go to film school, but again, you know, I was, you learned along I, I the was, way. I was, no, I paid I, attention. But, but it wasn't just that I learned along the way. It was that that's always what I wanted to do since I was a little kid. Like I was, I had a camera in my hand since I, I was taking pictures a lot since yeah. I was a little kid. Like I was doing things, I'm drawing and mm-hmm. kind of expressing myself visually for a long time. Since I've been little, making mm-hmm. movies. Like, so that's an, an even bigger advantage, being yeah. able to, you know, taking that into a set where I'm still just learning, right? Because mm-hmm. I, I have some kind of idea like, oh, yeah, the camera goes here and this is what happens. Mm-hmm. And, and how to, you know, I was editing on VHSs when I was a little mm-hmm. two VHS machine, which you probably have no idea about. But um, obviously I had yeah. one. Did you? Because, I was born in 87. Right. But you never had a like. I had like a TV that had a VHS attached to it. Right. What like was a little like, cute TV? Do you remember like what your favorite VHS tape was? Um. Yeah. Fuck. I I bought Requiem for a Dream and my mom took it away from me. <laughs> that's that's such I a funny VHS to have. Like, see, that movie <laughs> seems like so well beyond VHS to me. I had that on VHS. Wow. That, yeah. That's. I had the Breakfast Club on VHS. Rad. Well, that's now that's a VHS yeah. movie for sure. Mm-hmm. I think the one that I remember, the, like I had a VHS player in my bedroom when I was a kid and the never ending story was like my, yeah, my big that VHS. movie gave that me nightmares, that thing that flew in the sky. Uh, the, the, the luck dragon? Is that, yeah, the is that, that the name? The, the white thing. Really? The fl- yeah. That's I like, have... <laughs> it was like a big dog. <laughs> Not my dreams. <laughs> it was like a monster. Oh. So you've hmm. directed music videos too. Uh, yeah, I have. I kind of uh, did it the opposite where the first few things I directed were movies and yeah, stuff like funny. that. Although I, I had done a music video before I did Grandma's Boy. I had done one with Sandler, mm-hmm. um, which is, you know, it seems so crude now to me. But uh, yeah, I, I, I did. I, I love music videos. I grew up in the MTV era, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. Like when I was uh, in high school in the 90s and stuff and there were still, you know, I remember seeing Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit for the mm-hmm. first time on MTV and just being blown away. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, um, so I always loved music videos. And I knew that g- growing up, like a lot of my favorite directors had done music videos yeah, that's from true. Brian De Palma to David Fincher to, you know, Paul Thomas Anderson again. Mm-hmm. And um, I kind of just was like, you know, I want to shoot more stuff that, you know, at the maybe at the time I wasn't doing a movie or working on a TV show or something. And, and uh, I kind of actively pursued it. And it actually wasn't that easy to even get started. Hmm. Like, uh, it's weird. And but movies and TVs and commercial and music videos, they all kind of, they kind of uh, like to protect their their little niches. Mm. Um, well, I was gonna- You kind of have to force yourself to make, to make yourself eclectic and be yeah. able to work in all those different genres. But yeah. Uh, Wait, well, what do you like? What do you like the best directing? I mean, movies. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even uh, even going through hell on my second movie um, and having 
like everything that could go wrong go wrong and oftentimes you know just being like again like the people who are paying for it kind of just telling me what to do all the time uh it's still so much fun mm -hmm. um it's still a lot of fun and uh, and um that's my favorite way to tell stories yeah. um tv is has been fun for me recently i've been working with comedy central a lot and um that's been interesting because we've been able to do a lot of stuff and and uh, I've been able to kind of make stuff like little kind of short films and everything. Yeah, what have Typical you been doing Rick. with them? Yeah. Well, I mean, the last thing I did with them was this thing with Trevor Moore. Um, I love him. D he's, he's the best. Well, I grew up uh, watching Whitest Kids You Know. Oh, yeah, because you're a New York girl. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, and that was which was so funny. Yeah, I I knew about it. I, I wasn't like an avid watcher of that, but yeah. I was aware of it. Um and uh, Comedy Central put us together a couple of years ago for his other special, High in Church, mm -hmm. which uh, I didn't see part of the, and funny enough, part of the reason why I got that gig, why uh, Comedy Central put me onto that is because they knew I had this music video uh, oh. re like kind of career. And they knew that I could do music videos and they knew that I had done a couple of comedy music videos. Uh -huh. And that's a lot of what Trevor does. He does a lot of comedic music. And so – uh, they they were looking for somebody to be able to kind of pull this together and direct it, and that's how we kind of got started together. And so, again, that's how, like, something where mm -hmm. I kind of pursued music videos and it kind of led to a whole other avenue for me in in, in comedy. And uh, and so now Trevor and I, we just made this special called The Story of Our Times. It, was, it came out on 420 mm -hmm. on Comedy Central. And it was a one-hour special, but it was very different in that it was like it was all scripted narrative. Uh -huh. And it had these kind of music video interludes of all these different genres. And mm -hmm. it was really fun. Um, yeah. It was really complicated, really fun. And he and I have a couple of other projects that we're developing. And so it was cool. Actually, Comedy Central put us together. It was like a new friend. And, uh -huh. uh, and we're kind of, you know, we collaborate well together. And so we wrote. We actually wrote a movie together that that's awesome that we're developing. And really, Adam may or may not produce it. We'll uh -huh. see. What, we'll see what's, what's happening. So. Yeah, hope fingers crossed that we get to make that soon. But um, again, I if I hadn't started making music videos, that all that probably wouldn't mm -hmm. have happened. Um, but seems like you have pretty good luck too. Not yeah, the, the I mean, talent I mean, obviously, but it seems like. Um, it seems like things like come like the right things come to you in like a very like easy cool way, just the way it sounds. Yeah, I mean, like energetically. Yeah, you know I, mean? I mean, I think you have to like kind of put yourself in the position to kind of be around to get mm -hmm. lucky like that. I mean, for, again, fortunately for me, I grew up in L.A. I wanted yeah. to be a movie director. Well, I mean, maybe I only wanted to be a movie director because I was born and raised in L.A. and because of the way that the boxing thing and all that stuff, but. Uh, so I didn't have to go far to, f to pursue mm -hmm. my interests, but at the same time, you know, especially like that eight years I did with Adam. Yeah, it was, we had some amazing experiences and I've pretty, I've met all my idols through him and I've learned so much. It was a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like, I, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't do, you know, a lot of partying in my twenties. I was like yeah. working and learning. And, Good though. You know, you know? Yeah. Well, of course. I, I mean, did a lot of partying in my twenties. It wasn't worth it. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people do that. And I, I know a lot of people who did go to college and mm -hmm. film school and stuff. And that's kind of what they did. And, but you know how it is. It's like, yeah, luck is, you kind of have to put yourself in that mm -hmm. position to get lucky. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, mm -hmm. it helps. Or just like there's a good, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, yeah, because you're going to have bad luck and you're going to have good luck. Mm -hmm. So you just have to stay consistent. You have to, just, yeah. and that's part, like, you're going to have a lot of ups and downs. So you just have to keep, keep making stuff. And especially you have to just stay on top of things and how they're changing. You know, if, if you get complacent, you get left behind in the dust. So you mm -hmm. have to constantly be kind of reinventing yourself, working on yourself, learning. So, like, yeah, I know, like, I'm, I've been directing for a long time, yeah. time now, but I'm still learning. I'm mm -hmm. still, every time I do something, something new, you have to keep that mindset. Otherwise, you get left in the dust. Like, uh, I just did a couple of music videos with this girl, Bad Baby, <laughs> and a lot of people were like, why would you do that? And I'm like, <laughs> because it, there, was, there wasn't a lot of money involved in it, but they had some, yeah, interesting concepts. And I know. Yeah, how did you get involved with that? They just hit me up. 
That's so they, funny. Again, because I had done music. They knew I yeah. did music videos. They know I work in comedy. Uh-huh. And um, uh, her managers might have a couple of mutual friends with me. Mm-hmm. But um, they just cold cold hit me up. And at first I was like, uh, let me see. I, I kind of barely even knew who she was. Yeah. I haven't really, like, followed the whole thing with her. What's her name? First name? Her real name is Danielle. Okay, Danielle so she's Br- the Brigoli. cash me outside girl. Yeah. But was she on like Maury or something? Wasn't it like some sort Dr. of- Dr. Phil. Okay. Yeah, Dr. <laughs> Phil. Yeah, no, she, well, that, and that's what she said. She basically, she- Is she is, really this is like- why, This is also like, like uh, cause you know, she's, I did come up uh, in a tough family, people who were not afraid to fight, even though they, yeah. you know, uh, they usually just throw punches rather than threaten to throw punches, but- mm-hmm. um, she basically said she would fight every woman in the audience. But it was a very, like, reminiscent of those, like, 90s, like, I do what the fuck I want, like, comes out on stage. Everyone's like, boo. And she's like, I suck dick all day long. You know what I'm talking about? Well, ye- she's a tad mature for her age. Yeah. Oh, uh, isn't she, like, 16? Yeah, 15, yeah. So 15? I, she's 15. Girls yeah. look so much older now. Yeah. I mean, or, like, I grown up. Not older. Like, she looks young, but, like... Certainly, you know, yeah. I mean, she still is like is like a little kid because I have nieces that age, and they just seem so much yeah. more uh, like out of it than she does. I mean, she's the the, the girl is sharp, yeah. you know. Uh, she's funny. She's 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 present. You know what I mean? Her mm-hmm. she, her head's in the game. She's awake. You know, she's fifteen yeah. years old, but she's aware of what's going on. You know, wow. she can get distracted like any fifteen year old, but uh, you know. Mm-hmm. She 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 means business and I, so and I I respect her uh, yeah. tenacity, um, and she's just she's funny and they sent me that song and I was like oh that's the Gucci flip flop flop uh-huh. song that Spade uh, is in. Did you you didn't see it? Thanks no. thanks Chelsea you did a lo- Sorry, really great job researching. Video. It only has seventy three million views in two months. Ooh that's good. Uh yeah it's actually my. So most- is that why Spade called Theo telling him to do? <laughs> Oh, you heard about that? I only know that because last night I saw Theo and I said, oh, I watched the video. Oh, what did you say? Joe's like, what video? (laughs) Rogan. And he's like, I play a pedophile. Oh, really? Oh, cool. (laughs) And then he was like, speed. No, but in in a positive way. Oh, okay, good. Well, he does. And what did Rogan say? He's like, oh, that's funny. I have to check it out. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm a fan of Rogan's. Um, uh, I was very cinematic. Thank you. Well, that I mean, that's the idea. That's the other thing. I'm not like... I don't make them. I mean, generally, that's what I'm trying to do with my music videos: mm-hmm. is just make like little mm-hmm. movies, little stories. Yes, and I and it was definitely that. That's what's which fu- was cool and about that's it. That's fun for me, you know. Yeah. Have somebody else pay for, to have me just kind of, you know, make mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, and I like musicians, by the way. I like mm-hmm. you know, I like music a lot. Generally, not 15 year old mu- musicians, but uh, mm-hmm. the the Gucci flip flops one is my most popular video I've ever done. So I'll have, I have to uh, check it out. And who who's that? Bad Baby. Oh, okay. It's Bad Baby. Why did I think her name was Bad Barbie? A lot of people do. Okay. I, I don't I, – maybe I thought that initially as uh-huh. well, but uh, it's just the way it's spelled because there's yeah. there's H's in there and people just want to – no, they I, Bad Barbie, Bad Bobby. Didn't she just Bahad have like a Bahar-bee. huge concert somewhere in L.A.? She sold out the Roxy. <laughs> But she's like a. She just did. She was just in London. She was just. In so New she York. became a musician after the whole TV appearance. Yeah, there's like full on. Well, that's New York good. Conference. I mean, I'm sure she got a manager, scooped her up, said, "What can we do to maximize this?" Well, she didn't pursue it. Some guy. So this guy who just had an idea. This guy Adam Kluger, I think is how you say his last name. Adam Kluger, and and she. This is like Vice has done a piece on her now, mm-hmm. and like the New York Times and New Yorker, I think maybe mm-hmm. even like all these big publications have kind of <laughs> documented. What a trip. Yeah, but he kind of went and found her and kind of brought her into Atlantic, the label, and he kind of helped make it happen. And he just had an idea like she talks really funny, she probably would rap really funny. Yeah. And so they kind of just got her in the studio and started working. She, I guess, she just took to it like a you know fish to water. And um, wow, yeah, she has a big following. 73 million views in two months on the Gucci flip flops video. Yeah, she's got 14 million Instagram followers, 15 million Instagram followers, and and she went gold. She went gold with her other song, and wow. she's nominated for Billboard Awards now because Whoa. with Cardi B and Nicki Minaj because they base those things on record sales, and she's like one of the few that's female incredible. rappers Good actually for her. selling stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so just, that's incredible. Uh, and, uh, so yeah, we did Gucci flip flops, which was like, was, and spades in that and mm-hmm. spades in it because he had like some run in with her at catch. 
that I restaurant. I saw the picture. Yeah. So because I think he was with Adam. Because Adam. Yeah. Because yeah, the because picture, they yeah they always yeah. go. I've been in this catch with Adam and Spade. It's the best, <laughs> uh, especially when Spade pays. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, they were like they had this concept, uh, mm-hmm. or we or we figured out this concept, and then we asked David if he would do it, and especially because there was that connection with them, and it worked out really well, <laughs> and, and a lot of people watched it. Yeah. And so the new one, we wanted to do some. It's like this kind of. Uh, yeah, like you mm-hmm. said, Theo's playing a pedophile, so it's, yeah. a, it's a bit darker. Nice twist at the end. Yeah. Uh, I was, I don't, I was like, don't oh, that's well-rounded. No. Don't no. Give it away. Yeah. No, it's uh, – yeah, exactly. Or it's full like, circle. Well, yeah, uh, I think a good message to put out there. Be careful who you're well, texting and stuff. it was funny because and... I, went, I was like, this is like a little gnarly. And yeah. then, at, And then at the end, I was like, oh. You, like, then it makes it like oh oh because you thought we might have had well him catch I was like I was like yeah. this is kind of crazy for like a music video yeah I was like is this what because I don't watch music videos anymore you know what I mean yeah so I was like is this like where things are going today really not even and like then, Taylor Swift or no really I I don't know I don't watch music videos I think Taylor Swift has like a I think her one bad blood has like a billion views or something is that the one when she's with all the models yeah and, yeah I might have watched that one yeah see, exactly <laughs> I, I like Taylor Swift I mean I don't have her records but like if the song came on on the radio and I was by myself I don't know that I would turn it you so you don't know, like because so many people watch them on like YouTube or you know music videos. I'm not like the kind of person who sits around and watches something on YouTube like to Somebody's check out send a you video. the link or something right yeah or if I was like looking up something I don't but yeah I'm not like I like music but like how do you get your music just Spotify or something yeah and it's like lame because I don't even know who they are or anything no like that. not yeah, that see. I I meant I haven't paid for Spotify oh you don't have premium I'm I don't know why I mean I should I know that yeah. I should it's so annoying it's like otherwise. a torturous thing it's annoying otherwise I'm just living this like I just weird have to life have my instant I know you know and no I have to make the change yeah it is pretty radical mm-hmm. Spotify but I like to kind of see some of these guys because sometimes I'll go oh this sounds really good but then yeah sometimes I'll see a video and I'm like eh, I don't know if I want to watch the, or listen to the song anymore. Like, yeah, I don't like goof. pay attention to like what's going on today in music. I'm pretty, you know. Well, I if I want to direct these things, I kind of have to. Yeah, of course. Which is um, and it's good <laughs> because, <laughs> because because it also you know if you want to make movies, yeah, okay, misdirector, yes, they typically need music, and there's nothing <laughs> worse. Also, here's another one for for uh, uh-huh. this is something for you. You should start knowing more about it because eventually you're going to have to put music in there. And I guarantee you for, for your mm-hmm. first few things, you're not going to have a big budget from your mm-hmm. music. Grandma's boy, like, that's all – it wasn't like – yeah, we had a music supervisor, but mm-hmm. it was, you know. Mm-hmm. I wasn't in music. I just don't watch music videos. Right, but you – you just need to expose Find out yourself about to new all people kinds who want to that you're going to be able to actually yeah. afford to be able to put into your your things when you're making you're your, wrong. your first independent film, and you need cheap music, but that's also yeah. cool and good. And that when kids hear it, they're like, "Oh, cool! That's, mm-hmm. I love this song." Finding the right music is hard too. It's very hard. Boogie Nights another great example of mm-hmm. the perfect mesh of mm-hmm. like kind of and you know a lot of Martin Scorsese stuff. But uh, uh, yeah, that's crucial. Quentin Tarantino. I mean, mm-hmm. these are guys who just take like you know. Just he wanted my Sharona for Pulp Fiction, and someone else had it that year, and he didn't get it. Just a small fact. I do know a little oh, bit. Oh, I wonder for which part. <laughs> I think, like, a driving scene. Uh, oh, I wonder if it was for, like, the, like, the, well, it's that Dick Dale, like, uh-huh. Miserable, 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 yeah. Dick Dale and the Deltones. Oh. I listened to them on Pandora, the station. Right. You don't know the new stuff. You know that old stuff, though. Mm-hmm. I do know old stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you did two seasons of Typical Rick? Typical Rick, yeah, which, fucking comedy, speaking of Todd Phillips, he called Comedy Central and was like, I'll produce this show and did he? you should do it. And yeah, he was, in, in, oh. and they literally still said no. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I was like, Jesus. Well, that's a nice uh, request that he put uh, in. Yeah, no. Uh, I, I, we're still like, wow, I can't believe we didn't we didn't get to do this, more of this. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, it ended there. Yeah, uh-huh. it's, it's two seasons. It was seasons. very funny. Well, that, yeah. I mean, there's at, at least they let us do it. I will say thank you. You know, I mm-hmm. appreciate them letting us do it. And, uh, uh, you know, now you can watch 12 episodes. It's like two hours, basically. Mm-hmm. So you can spend two hours of watching it. And it's kind of like there is a bit of an arc. Mm-hmm. So at least we go out on a high note um, mm-hmm. and you're in season two. And I was actually thinking as I was on, on my way over here, I was like, God, we should have actually 
shot a close up of you guys and, yeah. and had you guys react. I fucked up there. Well, it's funny because Simon texted me like the day before and he was like, Oh, do you want to like, uh, he's like, Oh, do you want to like be in this thing and be like this character? And I was like, Well, what do I have to do? And he's like, Oh, well, we'll have you like saying stuff. And then when I got there, I was like, I'm not saying anything, Simon. I know. <laughs> well, that was, I was, I mean, mm. we, we, that, that was day one. Is of this the me shoot. throwing shade on a track? A little bit. Uh, Sorry. It, that was my fault. I mean, ultimately, okay. ultimately we were, I mean, you remember mm-hmm. who we had to shoot right after your scene. That is true. That is true. And we were but racing that... to get him, but all I had to do was just go think and then get, and because even if mm-hmm. you didn't say anything, it would have been better seen mm-hmm. if I was able to cut to you guys. Like mm-hmm. when he says the thing about shitting his pants, it was like fun. You guys look yeah. at each other and then look grossed out or something that would have added to it. But yeah, it seemed like a very fun set. I mean, I like just, you know, two Did you ever watch any of it? Yeah, I did watch some of it. Mm. Two good friend of yours, you know, just hanging out, making funny shit. Well, that's like, you know the dream. Again, Adam kind of showed us the way and Nick and I, yeah. you know, uh have been working on a lot of stuff together for, for many years and and that actually was even though we've written a bunch of things mm-hmm. and, and we've had a bunch of things very close to going, including movies and all kinds of things to kind of follow up grandma's boy. Typical Rick was actually like the first thing anybody would actually let us shoot finally. Hmm. You know, we had all these interesting ideas and scripts at various places, um, pilots and like I said, movies. But uh, we finally got to make something and Comedy Central let us do it. And yeah, uh, Simon's one of our best friends. The concept and, is very funny. It's I mean, like it's, he's an attractive guy who moves to LA and wants to be an actor, but the other guy, get, Nick, gets all the attention, right? Isn't that like the... the ver, reverse. Oh, Nick, Nick is like... <laughs> Nick, yeah, Nick, Nick, actually. Yeah, yeah. Simon's like just the good-looking friend who just tags along and kind of gets more play. But it's all right. <laughs> she didn't watch it. Anybody. Wait, that's so she funny because... She didn't yes, it. I did. No. I did watch it. I saw Chris Titone in it. Chris, I do. Yeah, well, we're how friends. Th- That's how he's the one who got me and Sandy. Oh, I would have thought Spade did. Or I I like, you don't know don't, Spade. That's right. I forgot. I, I know him, but I don't know him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I sat in on the fantasy football game before. Oh that yeah. They have. Oh yeah. Pro- yeah. I pro- I did really. Uh, I did really well in that. I was my really? first my first year ever playing fantasy football. Uh-huh, this year. I, yeah, and I beat Spade. Ooh, so. that's fun. Mm-hmm. I um, came in second though to Adam. Uh, love it. The comedy so, star guy, he won. Adam. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's his last name again? Egit. Yeah, Adam. Yeah, he won. Um, that's fun. Mm-hmm. So, so it, what's it's, coming up, Trevor? Uh, well, Trevor came out in, in in April, but you can you can see that um on uh on like the Comedy Central app mm-hmm. or, or whatever. Um, and then. I just I'm just finishing uh, this new special for Netflix. Um, I sh- I thought I would never do a, a, another comedy special as complicated as Trevor's, but this one I just did with Adam Sandler oh. and, and, and Steve Brill, who directed. Is you. that a Dynasty typewriter? That one? Yes, th- those were the shows that I, I was I was doing. Um, oh, the uh, I did right. I, I did five shows with him in. In L.A. at the Dynasty Typewriter, and uh, I did an, another show with him in Charlotte, and then uh, and I did some other stuff with him in Minnesota and last year. This it, it's an incredible comedy special. It's it's almost more like a concert film. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to say the name of it because I don't think they've released it, but it's an Adam Sandler uh, special. I think it's coming out in October. Yeah. Uh, uh, color correction is almost done. That's uh, so awesome. It's it's a bunch of stand up and and music mm-hmm. and uh and some other little things in mm-hmm. there and it's uh Paul Thomas Anderson directed some of it. Wow. Steve Brill, I did. Um, That's so fucking cool. Yeah, it's it was really fun. Yeah, it was really really fun. And uh, I mean, I don't. It's. It was we shot it like for two years. Like he was just it was evolving, and it's 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 really fun. I mean, it's so catchy, and I really, didn't even really know that he was uh, doing a special. I just didn't. Whatever, I didn't hear about it. Yeah, um, I guess because most of the people at the store, like I see them running. You know, whatever. He did some stuff at the store one night. Um, uh huh. And I actually haven't even seen him do stand up live. A lot of people haven't. I, yeah. I th- I'm pretty sure the last time he was, well, he's done some appearances. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously he's done like some award shows where mm-hmm. he does jokes and stuff. And then I think he did like the 9 11 benefit where he came out as Opera Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, he hasn't done, um, uh, uh, I think, a stand up special since this HBO one he did in the mid 90s, which. Uh-huh. 
I think that I think that's where they took the Hanukkah song music video that they mm. used to play on MTV, mm-hmm. where, like all those crazy kids. But um, yeah, he does. It's a really funny stand up, and then more music. Yeah. So um, it's 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 hilarious. I'm really excited about it. So that's that, com- awesome. that comes out in October, mm-hmm. and then uh, I just put out that new uh, Bad Baby music video this week. And yeah, um, check that out. Check the name that is out. Bad Baby. Do you trust me? Mm. And it's and a good Gucci song. Foot pops, yeah. And if you want to go see all the music videos I made, you can just go to my website, nickygoose.com. And where can we find you on social media? Uh, at Nick Goosen, N I C K G O O S S E N on Twitter and Instagram. I don't do a lot of tweeting because that can just completely ruin your career. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's so <laughs> don't funny. Don't tell anybody what you're thinking. Um, I'll leave that to the brave comedians. That is. Such a good point. <laughs> you know, I, I learned a lesson back in 2010 or 2011 in the earlier days of, of, oh, yeah. of social media where I got into a bit of a row with uh, some some British artists over some over this uh, billboard I did in Times Square, this commercial, this Forever 21 <gasps> billboard I did. I saw that on your Wikipedia what is what was that? Uh, you, did it have something about it, me getting into a controversy no, for that? Just that you like um, did something to do with a billboard for Forever Twenty One, and I don't know why it like made me excited. Well, the other thing <laughs> I've been doing a lot of since I made those movies uh-huh. is commercials, yeah, and, along with TV, yeah, and you know those are uh, can be pretty lucrative and, mm-hmm. and uh, fun, quick little. They're thing. fun, quick things. Yeah. So the last one I just did with Nikki Glazer, you know, she and I went and made a commercial out in Florida. I didn't. So I yeah. love her. She's so fucking funny. I watch her. Nikki like, is hysterical. She's so funny. I, I, and like, I love Nikki. I've too. always really liked her. Huge fan. But like, um, just like her particular set right now is so fucking strong. I haven't seen her stand up set recently. Oh, she was here last night. I think she's probably here again tonight. Oh yeah, I saw that she was here last night. Yeah, because I well she's well she's doing the roast battle tonight. Oh okay. Uh, I know. So I, know funny. I know they're taping that, which um, it's my friend's birthday. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I might go to that. But. Uh, uh, she's hysterical. She's so funny off the cuff too. Yeah, but I think she's a. I think she's untapped as an actress. Actually, I wow. think I think she could be a, a really good actress. I've told her so. Um, and you know, we just had a blast. I've done two kind of branded things with her, mm-hmm. and Comedy Central put us together mm-hmm. for one of them, and and you know became friends with her then and uh, she did a, a, a small thing in Typical Rick as well mm-hmm. uh, in the first episode of season two um definitely check that out guys and uh then i just did this commercial campaign with her and we just had so much fun it's just fun. It's, she it's, she's just so easy to work with i think she's great yeah and do, 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 like just to close on do you have any sort of like advice for creatives people who you know want to be filmmakers oh, or well, just but yeah the, I, I was just gonna say that i learned my lesson in the Times oh, square yeah. thing because i uh uh i just got into a bit of a back and forth with some artists and it ended up costing me <laughs> it cost me a couple of the forever 21 jobs they ended up hiring me back oh again oh my god but really yeah, over a tweet that, it wasn't even tweets because i wasn't even i don't yeah. think uh, tweeting back then it was just uh, like i think uh, i forget what message boards it was or something on a yahoo message a Vime- board. i think it was like vimeo <laughs> or something even how like, would they find it it was like a very artistic but it was uh, it was like these artists who were accusing this ad agency of plagiarism and I for some reason was sticking up for an ad agency yeah. like that was necessary which you'll never do again but see that just shows yeah I'll never do it again <laughs> for sure I was just like uh, it was it was uh, yeah youthful exuberance misguided uh-huh. misguided but anyway yeah don't say shit on Twitter at Nick Goose and f- follow up advice closing advice um, you just d- what you were doing if you wanted to be a director mm-hmm. I mean it's just it's pretty simple Shoot stuff, make stuff. You have the technology. I mean, now it's easier mm-hmm. than ever to you can do stuff with your phone. Use your friends, use your family as actors if you have to. Use yourself, although it becomes a lot more difficult. Harder. It's a lot harder yeah. to do if you don't have a crew. Um, I'd save that and uh, read. Ru- obviously, watch movies. Read people talking about how they made movies. Listen to interviews. I mean, there's pot. You can listen to the DGA podcast. Incredibly insightful. There, oh, there are know. podcasts about screenwriting. Craig Mason and John August have an amazing one called <gasps> oh, Script Notes. I've listened to that before. 
Those guys are really, really smart, and I, yeah, uh, I still learn things every day. They talk about everything from like software to uh-huh. you know literally uh, how to write good exposition to how to deal with an agent or something like that. Like they cover the mm-hmm. gamut. Like it's just that's just a filmmaking podcast, uh, you know, all encompassing. Um, you can learn from them. I listened to a really good episode of John August on Chris Hardwick's podcast. Uh, which nerdist, was a really yeah. good episode. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And John August, actually, I just bought his, like, if I hadn't listened to him on his podcast, I probably wouldn't bought his new script writing software, which mm-hmm. if you write screenplays, used to be really final draft was the only thing you could ever use, right? Because that was the, the standard formatting. Yeah. I mean, there are no rules how when this, it comes to this thing. How is this software different? It's 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 kind of difficult to explain. Okay. I, I would say uh, if, if, if I don't want to get in the weeds with the technicalities of it, but it's it's definitely just just not as rigid as Final Draft is. Final Draft is a notoriously kind of rigid, uh, wonky software. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be problematic, but it, it, people just get used to it. He like he even has like new script writing software that makes things a little bit easier for huh. people. But yeah, listening to the guys like that, I mean, and just making stuff, editing your own stuff, writing your own stuff. Um, that's the best. That's the best way to learn. And then working on movies mm-hmm. if you can, or TV shows. Mm-hmm. And it does really help to live in LA or or New York yeah. or, or Austin or someplace like that mm-hmm. where there where people are actually making stuff. Atlanta. Yeah. You know, I mean, there are a lot of places now across the country. There's yeah. really there's really no excuse. Yeah. No excuse. Yeah, and you have YouTube to upload it to, so mm-hmm. it's not like you have to even send something to somebody. You just, I mean, you upload it and then what? Send a link. I mean, that's not. What even, do you think is better, YouTube or Vimeo? For uploading well, for what? things too. Oh, okay. It depends. Like for my mm-hmm. website, it's pretty much all, you know, I just embed Vimeos because it's a little bit higher Richer. quality. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a bit cleaner. Okay. Yeah, I do mm-hmm. pay for it. I do I I do pay for it. Oh, much, I didn't like, mean financially. I meant like it looks better. Yes, it. I. W- it's pretty close. I will say YouTube has really stepped up their game. Well, you have to like click the HD button first of all. Yeah, I mean, it's it all depends, I guess, on your internet connection. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Vimeo <laughs> is the artist choice. It's just way smaller group of people. But Vimeo is good for like private sharing and stuff like that. But I mean, YouTube is where that's that's the big where the views are at. That well, yeah, that's where the eyeballs mm-hmm. are. That's where you can actually make money. That's where yeah, the most people, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's still the main the main game. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Nick. And uh, this wasn't very funny, but I no, it was it interesting. Was, it's it's not set out to be funny. Okay. it's just a conversation. Well, that's good. And you did great. So thank you so much for uh, you know, being on and check out Nick's uh, you know, new video he just directed and all his other stuff on Comedy Central. Yep. And- Watch Typical Rick on Comedy Central. Watch the Story of Our Times on Comedy Central, which is even more recent. Uh, and then also keep an eye out for that Adam Sandler special in October. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nick. Bye, Chelsea. Or Bye. soon to be not Miss Skidmore. What are Randolph. You gonna... But Rand- I'm keeping Skidmore for my stage okay. name. Chelsea Skidmore. Bye. Bye.